that this ain't what your daddy wanted when he told you not to watch television. Mama, I can't see a thing. Can you, Terry? Of course not. I don't know if the kids are getting smarter or the grown-ups are getting dumber. <laughs> oh, hello. Come hello, in, Mr. Lassie. Mr. Williams is due back any minute, ma'am. What's with the blindfold? Hi, Benny. Daddy said we can't watch television all week because we're being punished. Oh, I see. What aren't you watching? Cowboy <laughs> pictures, the bad men of Texas. <laughs> Do you mind if I sit down and don't watch it with you? <laughs> uh, by the way, why are you being punished? Just because I didn't put my sweater away and left it lying on the living room floor. So your father has become neat? No, he's still sloppy. <laughs> We've become neat. <laughs> and you can't watch television all week just because you left your sweater on the living room floor? Ain't it drastic? Well, my skates were under it. <laughs> Did you hurt yourself? <laughs> Heavens no. Whatever gave you that idea? I always wear one leg in the cat. This way, a pair of socks goes twice as far. <laughs> Did I hurt myself? You know, I'm glad you're here, Betty. He was running out of people to yell at. Who yell? Me yell? I never yell. Shut that television set off, will you? Television? <coughs> Didn't I tell you kids not to watch television for a week? watching, we were just listening. Like this, see? We couldn't see a thing. Ask Uncle Benny. Yeah, you said we couldn't watch television. You didn't say we couldn't listen. Yeah, we found a loophole. You found a loophole, huh? <coughs> okay, legal giant. May it please the court. Be it known to all men present that for one week, you and your sister here and after referred to as punishees, are ordered by me, here and after referred to as punisher, to refrain from watching and or listening or participating in any activity having anything to do whatsoever with television in any shape, manner, or form, and all foreign rights are reserved. Now, finally... <laughs> strawberries again? No. You have, haven't you? You know you break out on a rash when you eat strawberries. If you think I'm going to sit up all night and scratch your back, you got another thing coming. <laughs> but Daddy, I haven't been eating strawberries. Then why are you scratching? Because I itch. <laughs> well, itch all you want, as long as it doesn't come from eating strawberries. <laughs> what a growl. Go to your room. <laughs> I don't see you for three days, and you break a leg. You don't mind. Look on the merchandise, but don't touch. <laughs> Danny, I feel awful about this. Are you in pain? Of course I'm in pain. Then I've got to leave. I can't stand pain. <laughs> Wait a minute. We got some songs to run over. We're supposed to rehearse. Rehearse? What are you going to sing? Don't get around much anymore? <laughs> don't be a white guy. How about I could have danced all night? All right. <laughs> I got a real snazzy one. Foot, foot, footsie. Now listen. Oh, oh, you made me hurt my leg. Oh, the pain. I can't stand it. <laughs> go ahead. Go on for all I care. Who needs you? Oh, boy. That Benny. Yeah, it's supposed to be my buddy. It's at a time like this when you find out who your real friends are. Oh, come now. Let's not dream this up into too much of a tragedy. You know, things could be worse. Oh, sure, sure. I could have broken both legs. I never thought of that. I'm so lucky. <laughs> Lucky, while you're lounging around here recuperating from a minor mishap, your uh, career is being kept alive by the finest press agent in the business. Your modesty overwhelms me. <laughs> oh, Danny, listen, I know it's tough being laid up like this, but honestly, count your blessings. Look, you're at the top of your profession. You have this beautiful apartment, and well, most important of all, you've got two of the sweetest kids in the world. 
Two of the sweetest problems, you mean. <laughs> what do you mean, problems? Never mind. I found a nice boarding school where there can be somebody else's problem for a while. Boarding school? That's right. Dr. Paris, the woman who runs the place, coming up in a few minutes. Look, this magazine article you want to run, Just huh? a minute, just a minute. Hold the publicity a second. What's this problem kid routine? Terry and Rusty are two of the healthiest kids I know, mentally and physically. Boarding school? Honestly, Danny. What's the matter with a boarding school? Nothing. Well, why send them to a boarding school to get rid of them? Why not just sell them on the open market? I hear kids are bringing two and a quarter pound these days. <laughs> Liz, let's talk about the publicity. I uh, know. Let's talk about your problem, kids. What's there to talk about? I've done everything I can do, but with no mother in a house to balance things, children get out of hand. We're at each other's throats all the time. Now with me laid up in a wheelchair for a couple of weeks, it can only be worse. It'll be bad for them and bad for me. Look, Liz, it's hard to explain to you, but a woman would understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she would? <laughs> Don't you think women are overrated just between us fellas? <laughs> what are you talking about? What do you mean a woman would understand? I should like to point out that I am a member in good standing of that sex. <laughs> First, I'd like to have you tell me uh, what the problem seems to be. Well, it's, uh, it's like I explained over the telephone, Doctor. <laughs> I mean, aside from the fact that your son seems to have developed the habit of hiding his skates under his sister's sweater. <laughs> well, for over a year now, I've had to be both father and mother to the kids, and I never expected I'd do much of a job as a mother, but lately I'm not doing so hot as a father. <laughs> Treating me more like I was an older brother. Well, they do? Well, not all the time. Sometimes like a younger brother. <laughs> But lately, I don't know, we're just... Well, I, I say something to them, and, and they look at me as much as to say, who does this kid think he is, our father or something? <laughs> then I start yelling and screaming at them, and they get confused, and, and then I feel like a monster. Mm, Believe me, doctor, they're good kids. They're not bad kids. Not bad at all. But I feel if I can enroll them in a fine boarding school like yours, that they'll get the guidance that they need, and... Well, in the long run, it'll be better for everybody. I see. Could I meet the children now? Sure. I'll call them. Russ? Terry? Come on down. I want you to meet an old friend of mine. This is Dr. Paris, my daughter Terry, and my son Rusty. Hello, How do you dear, do? Rusty. How do you Hello, do? Terry. I never met a lady doctor before. I guess they're good to have when you can't get a real one. <laughs> <laughs> We're grooming him for the diplomatic service. <laughs> That's perfectly all right. I know a lot of grown-ups who feel the same way about it. Yes, and I know a lot of grown-ups who act like children. Only we aren't mentioning any names. <laughs> all right, all right. You know, it seems to me that having a famous entertainer for a father would be a lot of fun. Well, he's having all the fun. <laughs> Is that so? How come I don't know about it? What makes you think your daddy's having such a good time? Well, gee whiz, wouldn't you be if you could ride around in a swell electric wheelchair all day and yell at people? I do not yell. And when I do yell, it's in a low tone of voice. Daddy, he's only teasing. He's simply hilarious in a nightclub, and at home he has no sense of humor at all. Mind how you speak of your father, young lady. Daddy, can we go back to our rooms? By now? all means, please do. Thank you. Maybe you can cook up a scheme and figure out how I can break my other leg. <laughs> See what I mean? Yes. Yes. Seems to me that the situation demands immediate action. Now, suppose I pick the children up in about an hour and take them on to the school. In an hour? Yes, isn't that soon enough? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, but... Uh, don't you have to sign papers and have examinations? <sighs> well, we can take care of the formalities at a more convenient time. 
in an hour. That'd be fine. Yes, sir, fine, 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 fine. They'll like it. They'll love it, as a matter of fact, since I'm such a grouch of a father with no sense of humor. Well, with children, you never can tell. With mine, I can tell, believe me. <laughs> when they get out of this house, they're going to be happier, I'm going to be happier, and my insurance company is going to be happier. <laughs> Put that thing away, will you? But this is my favorite puppet. Okay, it's your favorite puppet. I didn't say throw it away. I just said put it away. <laughs> I'd like to talk to you for a minute. Uh, uh, how, uh, how would you kids like to get away from this place for a while? Oh, boy! I mean, I mean... To a, a place where they got a horseback riding and tennis. Oh, boy. And swimming and boating and stuff like that. Oh, good. Oh. I, I when thought you... you'd like that. Yeah, when are you taking us, Daddy? Well, uh, I, I, I'm not taking you. You're not? No, no, uh, Dr. Paris is taking you. That's the woman you just met. She has a wonderful boarding school out in Long Island and, uh, and they have all these wonderful activities out there. And, it's a great idea, isn't it? Well... Oh, come on now. It's a great idea. You were just jumping for joy a second ago. Admit it. You want to go, don't you? If you really want us to go... It isn't that I want you to go. You want to go. Now, come on. Admit it. Tell the truth now. You want to go, don't you? <laughs> now, come on. Admit it. Did I get the bright light and the rubber hose? Chief? <laughs> Why don't you stop acting and admit the truth? It's a real great idea. You're happy about it, aren't you? Aren't you happy? Are we happy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, so. <laughs> Maybe it just takes a little time before you feel it. <laughs> Daddy, who's going to take care of you? Don't worry about me. I'll survive. <laughs> now, I know you. The minute I turn my back, you'll stuff yourself with salami sandwiches and then spend a whole night drinking bicarbonate. <laughs> and burping. <laughs> that's all that's bothering you. You can just put your minds at rest. I mean, if you're so happy to go, you better get packed because Dr. Paris will be here in an hour. An hour? Yeah, hey, what's the matter? Isn't that soon enough? <laughs> well, you really want us to go. Will you stop saying I want you to go? You want to go, so why don't you admit it? Go on downstairs and get your baggage out of the closet. All right. Come on, Rusty. <laughs> How do you like those little hams? Acting like they're, they're not anxious to get away from me. Yeah, well, what about you? Won't the apartment seem a little lonely without them? Are you kidding? But I have the time of my life. Who needs kids around the place? Go ahead. Let them leave me a cripple. Let them leave me. Let them leave me. to a spoiled slice of rye bread. <laughs> you sure you don't want anything else, Mr. Williams? No, nothing. Huh? Go home, go home. Sure is lonely around here without the children, ain't it? What children? <laughs> oh, I forgot all about them. <laughs> well, good night, Mr. Williams. Good night, Terry. <laughs> I mean, Louise. <laughs> Reviewer. 
Tonight we have with us the very distinguished Madam Emily Pulichek, authoress and illustrator, or should I say, uh, illustratress, <laughs> of a brand new book entitled, I Was... Sounds to me, Mrs. Klein, as though you aren't using the right kind of fertilizer. <laughs> Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time. Come over here and look at you. Say, you're growing up. You know that? You look wonderful. How do you feel? I feel fine. Good, good, good. Can Rusty play a while before bed? Rusty? Well, son, he's, uh, he's away on a trip. Okay, thank you. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's your hurry? How about a shot of chocolate milk for the road? <laughs> Real good for you. No, thank you. Would you like something maybe a little stronger? How about root beer? No, thank you. I gotta go and find somebody to play with before bed. Oh, what's the matter with me? I play real good. I taught Rusty everything he knows about cops and robbers. Oh, come on, what do you want to be, the good guy or the bad guy? Really, I gotta go. What do you, well, well, you don't have to go right away. Why don't you stay around and play with me? If you don't let me go, if you don't let me go, I'll yell for help. Go on, go ahead. Just for that, I hope you grow up and have children of your own. <laughs> <laughs> What's with him? Yeah, it's one of Rusty's little pals. Boy, you sure antisocial. I ran into Liz. She told me you sold the kids. <laughs> well, I didn't exactly sell them. I, I hocked them for a while. Well, I thought I would come up and take their place, seeing as how I'm only a child at heart. <laughs> How can you get so attached to two noisy little monsters like that? It's just nature's way of making sure you bring them up instead of throwing them out. <laughs> yes, you're right. Come on, I want to get my mind off myself. Let's go somewhere. Hmm. I don't figure on sleeping much tonight. Let's take in a movie and then maybe catch a late show at the Copa. Good. Shall I call a cab or shall we go by that Bellevue rickshaw? <laughs> don't make fun of this thing, kid. It's a lifesaver. Now, take that tray in the kitchen for me and grab a pair of crutches in the hall. I don't need them. I walk fine. <laughs> I need them. Now, go on. Take the tray in the kitchen. Let's get out of here. I walk fine. Well, what have we here? Hi. Just as I thought. Salami sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, Danny, you ought to stop eating that stuff. <laughs> He's so right. I can't break the habit. <laughs> what happened, Dr. Paris? Did you expel him already? Oh, no. I had to come into town on business, and Rusty wanted to pick up a hand puppet he'd forgotten to take. I'll go get it. I think I saw it on a chair there a minute ago. Oh, yes, here it is. Well, what's it doing down here? I left it up in Terry's room. You're asking me for I don't play with your toys. <laughs> well, I, I guess you got what you came back for. Yep. Well, I I hope we didn't interrupt anything. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, Benny and I, uh, by the way, Dr. Ferris, this is my accomplice, Benny Lessie. How do you Hello. do? Uncle Benny and I were just want to go out and paint the town. Well, I guess we better get going then. Yeah, we don't want to make you late. Oh, we got a little time. Why don't you tell me about the school, how you like it? Oh, it's a swell, uh, huh, Terry? Yeah, oh, it's real nice. We love it. I suppose you're... Dying to get back. You said it, boy. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't want to keep you. Yeah, I, I guess you and Benny are anxious to get going. It's not that we're anxious to get going. It's just, well, you're dying to get back to the school, so... Oh, sure. Yep, that's right. Swell, swell. Well, bye. Bye. Hey, wait a minute. Gee, look how dark it is. 
it is out. You think it's safe traveling all the way out to Long Island when it's as dark as all that? <laughs> hey, he, he, he's got a point there, you know. He sure has. That's a dangerous trip in bright daylight. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding, Doctor. You look up your statistics and you'll discover that most of your nighttime accidents happen after dark. <laughs> no, I, uh, I know you're anxious to get back to that school, but, but I think it'd be a lot safer if you spent the night home. Hey, that's a swell idea. I think so, too. I can pick them up the first thing in the morning. Oh, fabulous. Come on. Oh, but wait. Uh, Daddy was going out. Oh, uh, oh that's all right. I, I changed my mind. I've decided to stay home and read a book. I was just about to tell you, Benny. Isn't that a coincidence? I was about to tell you that I have a very splitting headache. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> I mean, you ought to lay off that salami. Mm. I must take my pills. <laughs> oh, the agony of it. I suppose uh, you'll be uh, picking them up uh, when we'll, we'll see you in the morning? No, I don't think so. Hmm? Mr. Williams, my school is equipped to handle only so many children. I like to reserve that space for families with real problems. Mr. Williams, your family doesn't fall in that category. I guess my kids haven't outgrown the need for their old man yet. And vice versa? And vice versa. <laughs> my, you surprise me. How's that? Well, I thought it would take a lot longer to convince you. Oh. After all, you're a very, uh, well, shall we say strong-minded man? Well, if uh, <clears throat> that's polite talk for I'm bullheaded, <laughs> Thank you. It is. Then you're welcome. Thanks for everything, Doctor. Goodbye, Mr. Williams. I'll send you a bill. Make it a big one. <laughs> Bye. All right, you kids, don't lollygag up there. <laughs> Come on down and clean this mess. Where do you think you are? One of those fancy boarding schools? <laughs> I don't know. He keeps coming to me for help, and I don't know what to do. What's the matter? What'd you have for dinner at that school? Roast beef. That's not what I mean. What'd you have for dessert? You know. <laughs> How many? Fifteen. Fifteen! <laughs> you the most? Right here in the center of my back where I can't get at it. Okay, come on. 